All right. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Chaos Community University OSPO or not OSPO working group. <laughs> uh, it's good to have all of you here. Uh, and for those of you that weren't here last week, we had just, you know, I, I know Saeed and, and Stephanie couldn't make it. Um, but it was like, if you look down at the minutes and just take a look at all everybody who was here, it was really an amazing group of people. So hopefully we can keep this momentum going. It's just awesome. Um, so a couple things that I wanted to talk about a little bit today was just kind of the focus of this group. And I think it's important to kind of revisit this now that we have a lot of folks joining in this call. Um, and I struggle with this myself. And so I kind of look to all of you to kind of provide guidance. So I think there are many different things that this working group can attend to. Um, there is scientific open source software, research open source software, university open source and public sector open source. They all seem to have some overlap to me in my mind. Um, I will tell you that we it does look like we're gonna be restarting our science and research software working group again. So we had some folks from Pandas and NumPy. Um, we just had conversations with folks that are doing some exascale computing and they have like large stacks that they're trying to maintain with a lot of open source embedded in there. So I'm, it feels like a lot of that conversation is going to occur there, but I would just like to get people's um, thoughts on kind of this first, first point of including scientific research, public sector, university, is that too wide? But just, it'll help me with my brain. <laughs> <laughs> kind of from a focus perspective. Yeah, so um, I think some of the earlier thoughts, not to say that that's where we have to be now or where we have to go, um, <clears throat> were around, you know, imagining universities trying to take stock of the impact of the open source that they're creating. Um, you know, if if... So, so that's certainly something faculty care about, but if you're a university administrator <laughs> um, and you're kind of thinking, well, what's the state of open source and what's the impact of that, you know, from, from my university, uh, I think was part of what, what we might've been thinking about. And um, I'm gonna put in, I hope that's the right thing, a Google doc from Richard Litauer, where he's, he's sort of in, in a very comprehensive way, asking the question, what do we mean when we talk about open source in academia? Uh, and he's looking for feedback. So, um, you know, th if there's a category in that document that makes sense, that might be another thing to do. But uh, I, I know the group's not about OSPOs, but sitting in an OSPO, you know, what, what would be incredibly helpful for me is here's something I can take around the institution to answer that question of what what's the impact of open source software at Carnegie Mellon. Um, and I'll, I'll add, I, I put this in the chat. Um, I went to that Helios workshop earlier, sorry, I guess it's November last month uh, in DC. And um, to no one's surprise, uh, there, there's you know a lot of uh, <laughs> barriers, I don't know, blockers to getting more people engaged in thinking about RPT processes being updated, you know, to include things like open science. Um, there are some institutions that have moved forward in that way, um, but I mentioned the work of this group, and I think the short version is there are some institutions interested in doing this. They need tools and resources to do it, uh, and could the outputs from this group be one of those tools or resources we give to universities to think about open source um, and impact and RPT process? I'll stop there. Sorry, that was long. It was really not that long. It's like a few minutes. It was pretty good. Okay. It felt long, felt, felt long to me. How's that? <laughs> um, other thoughts? I like this. Just that statement that you said a few times, Saeed. Just the impact of open source at the university. And our, I mean, really push, the, that's just pretty much sums up one of our main foc foc focus right now is um, is you know showing value, so that's I think very similar to what you know Said was saying, what Richard's uh, asking for as well. The value of open source within the university. Yeah, within the university. 
Okay. Not to add another group, because, you know, there's already all of them there, but you, I'm not sure everyone's aware of the group that's looking at open source in, in, te in tech transfer um, uh, that got that, that's meeting every like once a month now. Could you add that? To the, I'm gonna try. Uh, I'm trying to remember what our exact name is. The, <laughs> I list, that, so. the list down here, the sure. many efforts yeah. that seemingly overlap list. And yeah, okay. and Andrew Wickman was the one who kind of kind of got that thing started. Yeah, um, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Um, how about other folks on the call? Are these the maybe the one that Saeed had put forward the impact of open source at the university? And then that Stephanie had put forward demonstrating value of open source within the university. Is this kind of where all of you are thinking as well. Um, we've heard a lot of interest um, about folks trying to improve um, standards might be too strong of a word, but things like code quality, making sure that like everybody has a license file, folks have citation files, folks have DOIs. Um, so I think being able to um, measure how much folks are um, compliant with those kinds of recommendations and then helping them, you know, either on our side, then building infrastructure, you know, making it easy for folks okay. to do those things. Um, so almost like a best, best practices effort. Yeah, but understanding where folks are now also, yeah. Okay. So far, I think this is resonating with everything we've talked about earlier in this group, but just as we have more people, I just want to make sure we're all kind of going down the same path. Um, Troy or Michael or Tom or Robin, I don't know if you have thoughts. I don't mean to put you on the spot, but... No, yeah, um, yeah, I think the things listed, I, I think those are like very, yeah. I don't really have any opinion on them just because I'm, um, you know, I don't want to say, oh, this is it, and I'm going to lead people in the wrong direction because I'm I'm not entirely sure what the heck should be going on. But I, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I definitely think that these are, yeah, these are good. Okay. Yeah. Troy, Troy's an auger developer getting getting accustomed to the um, chaos process. So, yeah, cool. Um, so not like a, yeah, he's very knowledgeable about a lot of things. I think he's learning a lot right now. Cool, thanks, Trey. Um, Robin or Tom or? Yeah, I was gonna say uh, kind of a plus one on uh, what Stephanie was bringing up about uh, um, value of open source within the university. Um, I've been thinking about a lot of like, it's demonstrating value, but there's different audiences, um, you know, so there's the conversation around value for, faculty promotion and tenure there's demonstration of value for like our corporate business engagement and our foundation relations you know so i i think it's um there, there's i could i could list off <laughs> a ton of different ones but i think it's that idea that you know even in some of our, our work with students like having that having open source be a valuable part of their portfolio for job searches and being able to demonstrate like the effect of what they put out into the world so being able to attach like metrics to that and show that what okay. they do to students is it's very valuable to them and in, in how when they start connecting with um uh, a lot of it comes up at cmu around job fairs but it, it's communicating that value so uh okay. just just a plus one on top of everything about demonstrating value okay great thanks tom uh, I agree with the demonstrating value, especially for faculty tenure and promotion. Uh, so being able to show that software you've built has a meaningful impact for research and for your community and for your discipline uh, is something that we struggle with. Okay. So I will say uh, the Helios workshop last month was in preparation for another workshop in January uh, in Miami that is aimed at university presidents, provosts, and vice presidents or vice provosts for research. 
Um, and I believe they have something on the order of 25, 30 uh, institutions that have committed to sending that level of, of mm -hmm. administrator earlier at, at, from the institution, including CMU's provost. Um, so again, if we wanted to say, here's a framework that you might consider to do exactly that, um, you know, Robin's point, that, that's an opportunity, let's put it out there. And we've also volunteered, when I say we, I mean my boss, not me. Uh, my boss yeah. has volunteered the provost of CMU to do a very brief kind of, here's what we're doing at CMU around open science, open source and RPT. Um, so we have a person who could potentially bring it to their attention. All right, cool. Um, and I think this site maybe speaks a little bit to, you had also made a comment kind of like artifacts to take around to people. Artifacts, this sounds like that could potentially be one of those artifacts. Yeah, what I heard at this workshop is um, there was a very lengthy document that they shared with everybody. It was like 30 pages long. Uh, and it was just rows of elements of RPT and, you know, open science connections, whatever, which had been done in a workshop with faculty members, uh, primarily from social sciences disciplines, mm -hmm. I believe. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I wasn't at that workshop, but what I heard about it was they were really eager. They were like, yes, we want to, you know, and, and they kept saying reform RPT. And I said, don't say reform. That's just going to rub people the wrong way. So we, we either came up with update or modernize. I don't know. We're still it's like an advance. Yeah. Something Adva advance. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the moment you say reform, somebody's going to be like, <laughs> oh, you think it stinks? Well, I don't want to talk to you. Um, so the, this group of faculty was apparently very eager to produce something that could be taken to administrators or whoever, you know, put department chairs, deans, whatever. Um, so do we possibly include something focused on software in that mix? Gotcha. Okay. Um, is this a public document, Said, or was it like it just shared at the workshop? Uh, it was shared at the workshop, but I can ask if I can get, okay. get my hands on it. I mean, I wouldn't mind. Sure. 30 page documents aren't very appealing as you <laughs> point out, but it, it, it's, it's a lot of rows. It's like a table. So. Okay. All right. All right, cool. Um, this is helpful. Thank you, um, everybody. I think it'll change kind of what I proposed down here. But um, I think another question here is um, there are a lot of organizations that have been mentioned as we have talked about things over the, the course. And you may recognize some, all, none of these uh, organizations. And Helios is one that continues to come up. And so part of me is you know, as we do the work here, um, there are a couple of things. One, it's to, to identify the organizations from which we can learn from. Um, also understanding the organization so we're not duplicating efforts of other people. So I don't want, definitely don't want to do that. So like there's really smart people, say for example, in RISA. And if, if there's an overlap, something that they're doing, I really don't want to duplicate that. Um, and then maybe the third is, um, Said, as you had pointed out, like artifacts to bring to people, like things that we could help kind of inform uh, decision making or policy, whatever it might be. Um, so I, I'm, this is not a list of like, these are all the groups we need to work with, because I wouldn't even know what that means. I don't um, even know where to start <laughs> with that many groups. Honestly. No, uh -uh. I just, this is like a, just me, like throwing out everything that I've heard over the last year kind of thing. So maybe it's important not to go through this group by group and say, you know, yes or no, but maybe are there a few groups that we might want to try to prioritize um, for reasons that I mentioned, you know, to learn from, to ensure that we're not overlapping or to potentially provide um, support for. And Helio seems to be one that does come up often. I know, say, you have a, a strong connection there. Um, and I, I, it feels like um, this is learning and contributing is really um, like it might be important to get updates on what is going on to Helios, for example, as you provide site, just like continuing to do that. Are there other groups on here that seem to be important to stay connected with? At least as we start, this, this group could grow. 
I, I think the sustained academic working group is a place where we can share, um, you know, drafts, if you will, when, whenever we think it's appropriate to share a draft of any artifact. Okay. Um, it's not only people in universities by design, um, but there are a lot of people from universities in that group and a lot of people interested in universities, even if they're not based at one. Okay. I also think, isn't Richard doing some mapping work? He is. He's doing a, a ecosystem map. So um, putting this, at least having this working group in that map would be helpful, I think. Yeah. And I'd probably like to see the output of that. I'd be real curious as to how they, how they describe that. Okay. Um, have you, but has anybody been going to this working group? I know that they met maybe last week. I, I plan on attending, but I just couldn't make it last week. Has anybody been? Yeah. Oh, Michael, hi. To the sustained working group or to the... Yeah. The sustained working group, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, it was I think... well, the one last week that, yeah, that was there. Mm -hmm. I yeah, think a few of, us, few of us have been going, yeah. Okay. Michael, I, 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 good to, hold like, on. What's Stephanie? interesting... Oh, sorry. No, my, my, Michael had his hand up. Mike. Oh, I was just raising, like, yes. Oh, the ESU, okay, <laughs> good. Now, Stephanie. <laughs> no, I was like, it could, it may say you could help. I'm getting, I was actually getting a little confused how sustain and curious are connected though because it seems to be i'm getting emails from the same people on that so that might be a good yeah. question. is that sure so so um again i i don't mean to imply that i'm the only person who's speaking for these groups and in some sense these groups are figuring out exactly <laughs> what what the scope's going to be and how we're going to work and so on um uh, but the curious group is the I always get this wrong, Consortium of University and Research Institution OSPOs, um, which has a very strong overlap mapping, however you want to think about it, with the University OSPOs being funded by the Sloan Foundation. Okay. Um, so it does include Trinity College in Dublin, which is not funded by Sloan. Uh, we had somebody from Chan Zuckerberg Initiative come by. She may join. Um, so it's not purely the Sloan funded OSPOs, but it's fair to say that's kind of the driver or the impetus for, for Curious. Um, the Sustain Academic Working Group was launched, at the, or relaunched, I guess Richard will want me to say, um, at the same time in order to have a broader, bigger tent, right? So if you're not part of one of those OSPOs or starting an OSPO per se, but you still want to talk about issues related to open source, the Sustain Group was set up for that. And there's deliberate sort of cross-pollination because Richard runs the Sustain Academic Group, Claire's running Curious, and, and obviously, you know, talking to each other and so on. It was a very quick version, but I think that's- That, that helps, because I think I got my I was myself <clears throat> thinking that somehow Sustain was running Curious, and I think that that was muddled in my head. So I'm glad you, that, that makes my more, way more sense. So Claire is part of that. Claire yeah. is part of Curious. Yeah, and I think I've been, I've been invited to that as well. Yeah. yeah. Okay, this is good. Um, I, I just, I'm putting a few names just uh, against some of these, just so as we have our conversations, I think it's important that um, as people are participating in these other groups, we kind of rely on each other to <laughs> kind of inform across these groups so that we're we're staying aligned, um, but not overlapping in a crazy way. Saeed, I think you're our only Helios person, by the way, just so you know. I think Stephen Jacobs, who's been on these calls before, okay. is also involved. Yeah, I think he's actually one of the co-leads for one of the groups. That sounds very familiar, yes. That is correct, yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, I think that's a um, open sources tech transfer group. Stephanie, did you put that there? Yeah. What is this? That's the one I said that is... Um... Oh, gotcha. That we're meeting so it's yet yeah, another group yeah. I, we don't have really we just started um andrew just got us rolling so we don't really have anything to link to yet okay um well this is great it's nice to see and for all of you that are kind of new to this group here are all the other groups you can join <laughs> so, yeah. so uh or you could just come here and get updates on all the other groups which is you know kind of kind of what the intention is with this this small exercise here so okay um, all right, great. So um, I think the point here is continue to, to think through these other groups and, and how we can work together. Okay.
Um, let's see. So I had, I'm just trying to write down kind of what we're focusing on just for my own well-being. Um, I'm probably going to have to update this just a little bit, just in terms of what we focus on. But I, I don't think it's drastically different than what we mentioned above. But I think I can pull some very specific components from what we have above uh, to build out this proposal a little bit. Um, I had also tried to put together this, again, based on our prior conversations, and kind of explain this a little bit. Um, let me make it a touch bigger for folks if you're looking on this screen. So um, I don't know if this is of interest to folks, so you can all tell me no and I'm crazy, but um, so basically the, the world of the research artifact is is kind of what occurs within the university is kind of where I'm, I'm seeing this. So the world of the kind of the open source. Um, at some point we care about what's inter occurring internally. So we definitely, it seems like there's a lot of value that can be understood here. Um, there is kind of this world upstream from this, from our, our organization. Um, so, you know, how do institutions actually influence what we can and can't do within our universities or what, what is even possible for us? And I think a most sensible thought there would be say a, a grant organization that provides something like POSE, the, remember the POSE grant, like that would have a, that's an upstream impact on us as a, as a university, um, something that we might want to attend to. Um, how do our, uh, how does our open source work influence people and institutions? I think this is kind of a question like you had presented, uh, Saeed, around Helios. Like if we can have an impact with Helios, that could be an upstream impact that could subsequently cascade into the downstream that isn't just us, but to others as well. Um, if we move over to the left-hand side of this, um, you know, how how is the artifact or the artifacts that we're producing as open source in the university having an impact on society or other scientific projects? Essentially, we ultimately release the things that we do and they go live in the world. And I think we're trying to determine what that impact is in the downstream. Um, and then how is, is if, if there's something we measure on, on downstream changes that have an impact on us as an organization, I'm not sure quite about that fully left-hand arrow. Um, so I just, the bottom, I have no idea about, like if we could actually connect the upstream and the downstream, but um, so I'm just, I'm trying to think through, again, the value that we're trying to articulate in the framework that we have and how we might understand, like, this is something that we're trying to do essentially in open source terms, like contribute to the upstream, which is Helios. <laughs> we're trying to have an impact there. That's really literally what we're trying to do there. Um, you know, to a point where, um, you know, say like Megan is talking about understanding how to help people within the university understand, say licensing. That's kind of the, this world of the research artifact. That's like very internal to, to the university perhaps. I don't know if this resonates with anybody. This is something that is just silly. Um, if you hate it, if I should just delete it, I don't care one way or the other. I'm curious what your thoughts are on this. Um, I, I don't think it's silly, mainly because I talked about a similar theme. So either we're both silly or, okay. or it's not. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it, it, I, I was away in October for 17 days, by the way. So one of those trips <laughs> was to the Middle East uh, to present at a conference there on open science. Um, and I talked about the connection between sustainable development goals uh, and and university research, particularly through open source software. Um, and and it, it was well received. Uh, there, I, I, I've got Three slides I can run through very quickly if you if you want to see visually what I'm talking about. I do want to see what you're talking about. Do you have them in front of you? Uh, uh, yeah, I do. Is it not worth it showing them here, or do you just want to put them in the minutes? Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know if I could share. I you uh, will be able to here in a second. Okay. As soon as I figure out where you are on my screen, and there you are. Um, can you see uh, bright colored boxes? Yes. Okay, those are the sustainable development goals. You may be familiar with these. There's 17 of them, um, started around 2015. 
So we're about halfway through. Um, and they're supposed to be uh, achieved by 2030. So we're about halfway through. There's a summit in New York, September-ish, I think, sort of a halfway reflection on these. And the consensus was we are way behind uh, and we need to change how we work on them and, and, and address them. And universities can play an important role. Um, this you may have not heard of called Donut Economics. Um, this is sort of a whole new way of thinking about growth. Uh, it's sort of a takedown on standard <laughs> neoclassical economics, but it basically has this concept of th that inner circle, the social foundation is sort of the bare minimum that people need to have you know, prosperous and healthy lives. And that outer circle, the ecological ceiling is sort of the, the boundary you don't want to exceed for things to be sustainable. So it's not infinite growth, it's growth that's managed and regenerative and, and so on. This is also a movement that's taking place. And in fact, it's a movement that's come together with the sustainable development goals because they're actually sort of informed by each other. Um, and this is a mapping of those two. And so basically what I was saying <laughs> is if you have research, you know, it doesn't have to be open source, but particularly open source at your university, um, in order to track the sustainable development goals, countries, cities, CMU is a university do these things called voluntary reviews, where you basically take stock of where you are with each of these sustainable development goals, and you're supposed to do that over time. Um, so if you can map your research to movement, you know, sort of moving you past that inner circle and, you know, back in from the outer circle, I think donuts are a really bad choice. But anyway, in, in, in that donut, <laughs> um, donuts don't apply. <laughs> Healthy, sustainable growth to me, but anyway. No, I never, oh. never thought about that, but whatever. <laughs> so, so can, can you get into the donut for your research? And I gave a very specific example. There's a CMU researcher who builds these open source low cost sensors that have been used in Pittsburgh and in, in CMU's campus in Africa and in CMU's campus in Qatar to demonstrate air quality issues, right? So Pittsburgh had um, you know this community that was saying our air quality is terrible and the city was basically saying, ah, oh, we don't really think it's, I mean, I, I, okay. So I should be fair to the city of Pittsburgh and saying, I don't think this was callous, but I think they were basically saying, we don't really see that it's as big of an issue as you think it is. So he deployed these sensors out there. He said, go, go for it, use them. And they measured the the levels and they took it back to the city and this is like, okay, you're right. Um, so there have been some interventions now, like free, free filters, you know, free masks, whatever, all kinds of stuff. Uh, so one of the sustainable development goals, 3.9.1, is air pollution, reducing the impacts of air pollution. So we should be able to look at that very tangibly and say this research had an impact on, on making that happen. So I, I think, Matt, what you showed is, in the in, at least in the same you know, ballpark. Yeah, I, put, I took notes down, like tracking open sources, contributing to sustainable development goals. You know, as part of that, and so I, to me, that would be on that left side of that. I go back to this, kind of here. Artifacts is having an impact on society. Yep. yep. Okay. Um. Well, say what was that presentation? Where was that? It was in the Forum for Open Research in the Middle East and North Africa. Okay. And these were, these are your suggestions. The, the, these were my suggestions in my presentation at that conference. Yeah. Okay. What, yeah. what I like about the donut is it implies that there is a sweet spot between not having enough and infinite growth. Like right. you, 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 it is quite visible how when you go outside the green line at the outside of the donut that you're getting into spaces where the environment is past an acceptable threshold. So I think it does reframe. I mean, no economist is ever going to adopt that because it breaks every single model that they've ever talked about ever. <laughs> but I well, like it. it. I, it I like because it it's real. It comes from a trained economist. So she she's she's sort of rejected her own her own training. I guess. <laughs> yeah. Well, good. An ecological an ecological economist. I would suspect. There you go. <laughs> That's actually a thing. I got a couple books on it. All right. Um... Well, thanks for that, Saeed. And I think one of the, the hopes awesome. is here that as we have kind of this, I have started to redesign it, but as we have these things, we can start maybe also thinking about them in terms of 
what type of contribution we think they're making um, and, and why we're tracking this, whatever this might be, all right? Um, so Sean asks if you can share the donut. Yeah, I just don't want to lose the donut, cool. I suppose, um, because I, I do can, think I it can, anchors. I can, send, I can send the slides. It does anchor, I think, some of this conversation and elaborates with, I would say, more value judgments that might be appropriate and necessary in this group. Maybe not. Um, Matt's got a general model there, and I think there's value. there are values impl implicit in the donut that I think, I don't know, I, I guess people can decide if it matters to us, but it would be nice to have a reference point going forward, I think. Okay. Um, so thank you for that conversation. Um, so in the last bit here, I'd, I'd like to do a little bit of kind of focusing in on, on one particular area. So if you don't notice, this is redesigned. So we had a, a professional <laughs> who is not me actually do a redesign of this. Do you remember the old look of this thing? It was like a, it was not good. And so the intention here is um, kind of, as you had mentioned, Saeed or everybody um, that, that having things that can be brought forward within the university could be helpful. And so as, as points of conversation. So I, I thought the intention here was to have this um, made to look a little bit more pretty and something that you could use in a slide deck if you're talking at your university to, to start having a conversation or framing a conversation around the functions that are important to you at your university. Um, so please feel free. These are these are open source. <laughs> these are all openly licensed. I should put a license on them, but um, please feel free to use any of these in any form or fashion that you see fit. So hopefully this is useful for people. So again, the the four around the edge here with research excellence, uh, translation, education, and community are not necessarily fully inclusive of every function that you all might have, but they're meant to just be a, a start of those. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen if we have more functions. I'll have to rework this model a little bit to fit a few more things around the circle. All right. Um, I've also, I'm starting to add um, around each of these. So for example, if I look at research excellence, the questions that we have produced, at least to this point, and again, they may or may not be the proper questions. Um, I'm also down here, if you see, I got you, Sean, but if you see, um, can you see those notes down at the bottom? It would be possible use cases. Like, I think this might start speaking to that triangle model, like why we might want these things, like how they might actually speak to something. Um, and then where we might go about finding some of the data that would help us in this particular area. So I'm just trying to to build out a little bit, not just the questions, but how do we actually move these um, these particular areas forward? Yeah, Mike or Sean, you had a question, not Mike. I actually wanted to call on Mike. Uh, he had a comment that I thought oh. was worth bringing up. All right, so Sean to Mike. All right. Uh, yeah, I'd be curious in terms of you know, obviously we have these four sections that are about the functions of an academic OSPO. But do you see any sort of direct connection between this and the kind of triangle model that you mentioned earlier? And I'm, maybe could you speak towards how you might see them connected in some way if you do? I'm hoping yes, but I it's a little cloudy in my head at this moment, but I think we can okay. get there. So my, my first thought is um, the things that we're trying to observe. So for example, research excellence and maybe some of these questions might map to specific spots in this triangle. Like this is a, if we can answer this question, this helps us better understand, for example, how the artifact is having an impact on society. At least that's my initial thought, but again, I'm not totally sure. Yes, I. Yeah, uh, if you can go back to the other diagram real quick. Yeah, so another thing I heard at this Helios workshop is provosts aren't gonna read 30 page documents, right? So having a high level representation is critical. So I think this first page is a really good job of that, even if it doesn't cover everything, right? So you can imagine a, a senior administrator looking at this and then saying to somebody else, hopefully 
associated with the OSPO. Can you look at slides two through, you know, N? Um, so I think this is a very nice high level kind of way of sharing this with a senior administrator. Cool, I appreciate those comments. And I will say thanks to Nicole Huseman for putting this, this diagram together. So Nicole is on the board of the Chaos Project and works at the Linux Foundation and has design experience. And she gave us a couple of different options, but this was the one that people seemed to land on. So thanks to Nicole. All right, um, so I, you know, I think what I'd like to to maybe do is is kind of leave this meeting. Could I ask for people to think forward um, two weeks from now around one of these particular areas? So research excellence, translation, community, or education. And I'm hoping, I don't think this will work well in 10 minutes, but I'm hoping that we could start the next meeting where we start talking about what are the actual components of research excellence, for example, that we need to, to enumerate um, and how we might go about collecting some of that data um, or education within the university or building community and artifacts downstream. So is there one particular area that people would have an interest in really starting to go deeper on a conversation really of these, these four research excellence, education, community, or research translation. And then the homework would be for you to think about that one particular area as we come back in two weeks. And I'll send out reminders. Yeah, Mike. Um, this might make it more complicated. No but, complicatedness. <laughs> uh, <laughs> one, when when I was thinking about, about this uh -huh. really excellent diagram that you had, uh, what I thought about was what are the services our office is currently providing or like what are the things that we're currently providing? And then how do those services like touch on any points in here? Um, like would, and from there, I, I could imagine working backwards in terms of thinking about like, you know, the ways of measuring and so on. Does that make sense? Are you saying that RIT is doing some of these things at the moment, perhaps? Um, yeah, and then I, I think because it's right, it's functions of an academic OSPO. So like, what are we doing? Well, we're having, we're teaching courses, right? And that goes under education. But then we're also helping do community building for research projects, which in some sense does community, but also helps with translation because some of our projects are working with other private sector people. And in some cases, it's improving reproducibility. Um, so in a sense, like and when I thought about like, which one do I want to work on or whatever, I'm like, oh, well, naturally all of them because you know, as an OSPO, we're doing all of them. Uh, so I don't know if like maybe having like adding functions of if that would be useful, <laughs> if everyone was like, would put in the things that they do on their day to day and then categorize them into this and see if we're missing something. Does that make sense? Don laughed and Said was smiling. So well, I I, I Said's <laughs> comment. It, yeah, it makes it makes sense. It makes laugh. sense. I I think Mike just volunteered to, <laughs> to do to do a lot of work. <laughs> uh, but no, I, I I see your point. I mean, there's there's certainly these are not clear boundaries, right? Um, but I I you know. I, I think for the purposes of sort of having people work on particular pieces and make sure we all come back together, right? That that would be one way to do that. With uh, unless Mike wants to do all the work. No, I don't want to take that away from you guys. You know, I I, I got to share the fun. You know, thanks, Mike. <laughs> yeah, no, I I agree to your comment that there is certainly overlap between, say, community development and research translation, and even education and community. These distinctions are just for sometimes rhetorical purposes, just, just so we can focus a little bit. And that's really the reason I think we have it set up this way. Um, I will say this too, Mike, you know, I think RIT has um, been thinking about 
these types of functions for a while. And I think there are other folks on the call who are are newer or that are kind of newer to thinking about some of these things. So personally, I, I would think that your experience here could help as we talk through what people want to see. Knowing what has been done at RIT would be uh, just a potential to to hop a few squares, perhaps, like some some things that you have done that work that we don't have to build from zero. So I would certainly rely on your experience to bring those things forward if that seems okay. I think we just have a variety of people in a, in a variety of different spots in terms of building out their hospital here. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm happy to jump in on the research excellence piece. Okay. So I'll, I'll, I'll volunteer for that. Great. Um, Tom, yeah. I was going to say I'd be happy to contribute with the education portion under uh, for the identifying the curriculum uses. Uh, okay. We're doing some of that. We're doing some of that at CMU right now. We're trying to map out kind of like the different types of uses and with like kind of a more expansive definition. Okay, uh, I would really appreciate that. And I think this is kind of leading towards what Mike was talking about too. If you're already doing things at CMU, like kind of bringing those forward would be really cool. And how you're thinking about the metrics around them. Um, oh, so I'm going to put these in the notes here. Yeah, I'm I'm happy to do the community section as well. Okay. I think that probably fits best with the work that we're doing. I would say, yeah, we I can probably do the translation. Does, does that make sense? Because that's a lot of the work we've been doing. Okay, so Said and Stephanie. Oh, the translation. I mean, if you want to, I can. Oh, yeah, sorry. Say too. Oh, sorry. I, I feel like those two overlap a lot. So they do. But, I, but yeah. Yeah. Um, Tom, you had said education, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And Mike, what did you say? Uh, community. Oh, well, I think that's every corner. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm sure I speak for the other three when I say all and put welcome, right? <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> and I'm, I'm happy to, to communicate as well. Um, if you, I would ask if, if you could, could you work in this document? Is that reasonable? Is this document well enough structured that you can work, whether it's in the notes down below? Or, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to continue I, to update these. So just, just so you know, you have, having some constraint is helpful, I think. Okay. Um, and then I think when we come back, the, the thought, and, and also, uh, I think when we come back, the thought would be is to have some order here of Saeed, Stephanie, Tom, Mike, kind of speak to what, what's happening at your universities in this regard. Mike, I think that addresses kind of what you're bringing up as well. Um, in think of it in terms of like the, the questions that you're trying to address and the metrics that, you know, how you're, how you're actually answering those questions uh, around the things that you're trying to do. Um, and that would just really help a lot. Okay. Um, if you want to use uh, Slack, the Slack channel as well, if you have questions, we can definitely use that, um, you know, to, to reach out to others on this call. Okay. Uh, I really, anybody else want to participate around any of these? Everybody is welcome and all thoughts are welcome. <laughs> no, there's no bad thought. I really mean that. All right. Yeah, I mean, Matt, I'll, I'll probably yeah. send it to the curious group, right? I'll just send the link to them and say, Oh, please you know, do. Yeah, take, yeah. Take a look at this and I'll, yeah. I can mention the, the four people looking at each each of them. Yeah, but yeah I'll, I'll try to get some feedback from that group as well. Perfect. That'd be great. And I don't think I have, a, we have a meeting of the tech transfer group before them, but I might send a note out to them as well. Okay. As to me, but... Yeah, this is that, that goes all the way back to that first. Here are the groups that we have. And let's, Let's have a conversation that, that can cross into those groups as well. 
Um, and then for the rest that, that maybe aren't participating over the course of the next two weeks, you know, when we get back together, all of your input and feedback and reactions to what other people are saying are also welcome. This is how we can build the best model that we can share with, with everybody. Okay, that is it. Yeah. Everybody, I really appreciate the time and effort from everybody and we're making really nice progress. It's a really great group. So thanks for being here. Thank you. Yeah. Till next time, everybody. Take care. Bye. 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 Bye everyone.